Yo, what's going on E7 fam? Pat here, back with kind of a public service announcement. For those of you guys who have, you know, been watching my streams for the past month or so, I've been doing a segment called Fix It Fridays where I help new players out and even veterans kind of uh, evaluate their builds, tell them where they might be missing certain stats, how they can improve the character, all those things, right? If you have a character that you're trying to play in Epic 7, you come on down to Fix It Friday, you show me your build, and then I try to make recommendations so that, that way I can point you in the direction to help you further achieve your goals in the game. Now the thing is, during this segment, uh, a lot of players send me their characters and there's been way too many times where I look at the gear and I see the stat swaps on the substats. And I see things like, oh this piece has 10 speeds swapped onto it, or 15% health. And every time I see it, I am taken back with surprise. You see, the modification gem system was implemented to help players correct substats on gear and to help reduce the overall RNG in the gearing system. Essentially, it reduces the time it takes to build characters and get you to be able to play them. But obviously, like everything else in Epic 7, there seems to be some caveats, and I feel like when I see people post substated gear that swap with 10 speed, those people aren't aware of those caveats. And those are the kind of things that can destroy an otherwise really, really strong piece of gear. And there's a chance that you watching this, you might unknowingly be destroying some of your account's best pieces. And if someone doesn't point this out to you and teach you this system, well then, that's going to seriously hamper your account progression. I've talked about a lot of this stuff in my new player equipment guide, which I realized because of how long it is, it's almost 40 minutes, not everyone watches. But for right now, for the sake of potentially your gear watching this video, I want to take a few minutes and actually explain Epic 7's equipment score system, the modification gems that you use to change your substats, and how all of that ties together so that hopefully next time I do a Fix It Friday, I don't recoil when I see 10 speeds swapped onto a piece of equipment. Let's get into it. So let's start with equipment score and how we can use it to get a rough estimate of how strong a piece of equipment is. Before we actually had the in-game equipment score, players used their own metric that they called gear score. Whenever you hear someone say something like, oh, this landy is 450 GS, they're talking about gear score. And gear score is a mathematical formula that players came up to try to explain how well a piece of gear rolled. Substats in Epic 7 range from 4 to 8% for most statistics. So people assign 1% statistic or substat to one gear score most of the time. If you've watched my new player equipment guide though, you know that there are a difference in ranges. It doesn't always just go from 4 to 8%. Substats like critical hit chance, critical hit damage, and speed have different ranges. Crit chance appears with 3 to 5% as the starting values and increases by the same amount. A max rolled substat at 8% is worth the same as a max rolled substat of 5% critical hit chance. Essentially, 8% divided by 5 gives us 1.6. Critical hit chance is worth 1.6 times what a standard substat would be worth. Similarly, crit damage appears with 4 to 7 as its starting rolls and what it can increase by. Crit damage is worth 1.1x of a normal substat using the same division formula of 8 divided by 7. Speed appears with between 2 to 4 in almost all cases. We're not really going to talk about 5 because of how exceedingly rare it is. So therefore, we can assume 8 divided by 4 gives us 2, so speed is worth two times what a normal substat is. So that basically gives us a table that looks like this. And this is essentially what each substat is worth in terms of gear score. Now that you know the multipliers, using this table, you can convert those values of each substat and total them all up. And that will give you that piece of equipment's gear score. 60 total or higher was considered the minimum that you realistically want to use on your characters. But ideally, you really wanted 70 plus pieces on your character. If you could have all of your character's pieces at 70 plus, that was considered really good. And in case you're wondering, 
85 is the highest score that you could get underneath of this system, which is exceedingly rare because it only occurs when you have maximum starting rolls, essentially 8% on everything, and every single substat rolls the maximum value. This normally would give you a piece that has a total of 72 using the gear score system, but then obviously you'd get the remaining 13 on a reforge, giving you a total of 85. And now I know what you're thinking, Sue, this is all wonderful and everything, but what the hell does gear score have to do with equipment score, right? Well, equipment score is nearly identical to the gear score equation, except that the value is approximately 26 points higher. So while 60 might have been the minimum bar to clear in the old days, it's now 86 under the equipment score system. The 70 plus score pieces under the old system are 96 plus equipment score using this system. And that perfect 85 gear score piece is actually 111 or maybe 112. Like I said, it's not exact. It's approximately a 26 point difference. I personally try to hold all of my gear to a standard of 90 or higher. That's just my personal rule. By the way, just because a piece is low equipment score doesn't necessarily mean that it is garbage. Some of the most insane pieces you can play on characters like Crimson Armin or Arunka might end up clocking in at around like 70 something equipment score. So again, don't assume that just because it's low, it is bad. Different characters have different needs and it's important for you to understand that. Speaking of understanding, hopefully now, you understand the equipment score system. So let's move on to modification gems, specifically greater modification gems. I personally think lesser modification gems are completely worthless and you should always just exchange them for materials and convert them into greater modification gems. Modification gems are meant to reduce RNG on pieces. The thing is, they have diminishing returns. When you use a greater modification gem on a piece that has had zero subs that rolls into it, it swaps at 100% efficiency. That is to say, if the piece has 4 to 8% effectiveness on it and it has never rolled into effectiveness, well then you could exchange it for say 4 to 8% attack or 3 to 5% critical hit chance or 4 to 7% critical hit damage or 2 to 4 speed. You're essentially trading a starting roll for a starting roll one for one. But what happens if you have one substat roll into effectiveness on a piece? Well, the highest effectiveness that you could start with is 8% effectiveness, and a maximum roll in effectiveness is also 8%. Essentially, one roll into a substat of effectiveness is worth at most 16% effectiveness. Now, what happens if I try to trade that 16% effectiveness for, say, attack percentage on a level 90 piece. Well, it returns 14% attack. Not bad, but the quality is definitely diminished from the 16% effectiveness. And this is on level 90 gear. On level 88 gear, oftentimes the return is even worse, clocking in at just 11% instead of 14%. I say oftentimes because some 88 gear actually swaps as if it was level 90 gear. This is a fun trick for you to know if a piece of 88 gear is truly worth your time, as the ones that only swap for 11% on one roll are actually level 85 gear in disguise. It's not truly level 88 or level 90 gear. Here is a table showcasing the modification gem exchange rates for level 88s as well as the level 90s. Notice how speed checks in at anywhere from 2 to 4 for a one roll on 88s, or four to six on level 90s. If we converted our 16% effectiveness to one of these speed values, that's anywhere from a two to 14 gear score loss on the piece, depending on whether or not it is 88 or level 90. And that's just from one roll. As you can see from the table, it gets even worse if you try to use modification gems on substats that have two or more rolls onto them. Note how speed ends up being worth the least amount of stats every single time, by the way. Do you see now why swapping can be so detrimental to your account? For Fix It Fridays, I'm seeing people submit pieces with 10 speed modified onto it. Do you realize how insane that is? 10 speed only shows up 
as a range with four or five rolls. Four rolls can be as high as 40% on a substat. 40 gear score. 10 speed as a modified substat is worth 20 gear score. Meaning you are potentially giving up 20 or even more equipment score on these pieces when you make a swap like that. It's like giving up two or three substat rolls outright. And if I'm seeing a 20 point loss on pieces that are sitting in the 80 equipment score range when I do this, well then that means those pieces were originally in the 100 plus range. That's basically mid to high 70 gear score underneath the old system. Remember, 70 plus was considered very good. And 85 is literal perfection. To get you to really understand how rare 85 is, I've been playing Epic 7 since day one and I've only ever seen one piece that is 85 gear score in all of my years playing Epic 7. And it isn't even on my account. It's on Valky's, by the way. Not even Elf Mage or some of these other super mega whales that you may watch or follow have that coveted 85 gear score, AK 111 plus equipment score. That's how rare these 100 plus pieces of gear are. And I don't want you to accidentally be throwing away potentially some of the best pieces on the server because you don't understand how the modification gem system works. That is why I'm making this video to stop people from ruining their gear and potentially destroying what would otherwise be an amazing account. So now I know what you're probably thinking after that rant. Sue, when should I swap <laughs> substats so that that way I don't mess up the gear and potentially ruin my account? Okay, it's really simple. As a general rule of thumb, I don't swap for anything with more than one roll into it. Basically, I'm only willing to trade starting rolls for starting rolls, or potentially in the case of one roll, 16 gear score for up to 14% worth of stats of gear score for a sub I actually need. If speed is involved, I am never taking the one roll exchange. I only exchange for starting roll base rates of essentially equal value, where 8% of a sub stat gets me that four speed. It is never, in my opinion, worth it to use speed as a substat otherwise. I understand how frustrating gearing in Epic 7 can be when you don't have a piece that makes the character you want to play work. But at the end of the day, this game is a marathon, not a sprint. You will sabotage your success if you do not exercise patience. Please. Be smart with your gear modifications. And if you're still unsure, hit me up on Discord or let me know down in the comments below. I will try my best to sit with you and explain it in better detail. Hopefully this was of some help to you. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.